Hi, this is Jeff Coronado on behalf of JCSE, and this is a session in Bridging the Gap. So Bridging the Gap is a series of structural engineering design tutorials that we've created um, that's intended to assist young structural engineers. And that's both um, young structural engineers who are aspiring to be structural engineers. Perhaps you're in your, your junior year, or senior year of college. And as you know, uh, obtaining a position in structural engineering is, is, is quite difficult, quite challenging. Um, there are few spots available uh, relative to the number of civil engineering graduates that there are. So you're competing for, you're gonna be competing for, for a few valuable positions. So you might be looking to gain some traction in what industry you will expect you to know. And so that's that's great, you know, for you, that's this is gonna be sessions in Bridging the Gap are gonna be very helpful. Uh, if you're already working in industry and perhaps you're in your first few years of your career, um, there's still, as you know, a lot to, to, to be learned. There's a large gap between where academia le leaves off and where industry ex and what industry expects you to know, right? So um, there's still a lot of gaps in there that need to be filled. And so again, this is, this is great for, for you in terms of bridging that gap. Okay, uh, this session, we're gonna deal with the title of nailing connection, nail connections with multiple nails. Sure, nail connections with multiple nails. You'll notice that, um, let's see if I can pull this down. You'll notice uh, that here is WR1, WR1. The reason that's important is because we're probably not gonna cover everything that's related to the example that we're gonna deal with here. Uh, and if that's the case, simply search our our channel, our YouTube channel for WR1, and you're likely to encounter other tutorials that cover topics that are associated with the topic that we're covering, but not covered in this particular session. Um, the question that comes in from, uh, from a young structural engineer is, is there a limit to the number of nails that I can use in a connection? Okay, so fair question to... Um, to tackle. Um, first, let me say this. Um, if, you, uh, if you find value to the tutorial after you listen to it, um, by all means, sure would appreciate if you give us a thumbs up. Um, any comments after the tutorial are welcome. Any suggestions are welcome. Any, any additional questions, anything that wasn't clear to you, by all means, let us know and we'll try to point you in the right direction. Um, and again, if the tutorial was helpful to you, by all means, subscribe to our to our channel, um, to our JCSE LLC channel in YouTube. Um, subscribe, and uh, and if you um, and I'm not real good at YouTube, but there's some flag or something, I guess is what I'm told that you can click on, uh, and that way you automatically will receive um, any any or or you'll automatically receive. Uh, notification of when we upload a new um, structural engineering design tutorial, okay? Also a hint, try to get everything you can from this tutorial instead of kind of like picking and choosing data, which I know that that there's there's kind of a tendency, I guess, if you will, to do, right? Uh, there, yeah, a tendency or I don't know if it's a tendency, I guess a desire to do in the, in the, in the uh, uh, for the sake of making it more expedient, um, you're shortchanging yourself. You do that, you're shortchanging yourself. Bear with the full tutorials that we have here on our channel. If you do that, what you're gonna find is that these tutorials empower you to becoming a structural engineer. They empower you to thinking like a structural engineer thinks. And that's what we're trying to do here is impart that kind of knowledge um, so that more quickly, uh, more quickly, you'll be able to become that structural engineer that doesn't need to depend on tutorials as opposed to the structural engineer who just kind of picks and chooses um, but wow, you're going to find yourself having to come back over and over and over again to tutorials, right? So be the structural engineer that just kind of grasps all the lessons that, that, are, that can be grasped from the tutorial. And, and you'll find yourself uh, taking flight, if you will, taking flight um, quicker. Okay, so with that in mind, let me see if we can uh, scroll up here. Let's see what do we have. Um, so we're going to cover first the assembly. So let's go down and take a look at the assembly of what we got. Okay, so this is the section that the structural engineer, the young, the young engineer submitted to us. And uh, we can see that we've got 
um, type five uh, construction, meaning wood frame, light wood framing construction. Uh, we've got um, we've got an exterior wall right here. Okay, we've got a roof framing, a roof rafter right here. And let me change the color here. And we've got a ceiling joist right here. Now I can almost see where this is going. Um, do keep in mind, do keep in mind that um, that when we have an assembly like this, it's very likely that this is a ridge board and tie system. Um, and if there's anything that I cover here that you don't understand, by all means, search in our channel. You're likely to find other tutorials that are associated with what we're discussing. And you'll probably find richer explanations of what we're covering if you don't understand it. Or just leave us a note at the end of the session and we'll be happy to point you to other tutorials that will cover uh, what you might have, uh, what you might be questioning. But yes, in this situation, more than likely, we have what was what we covered in our junior year in, in college, um, in, in our statics class, a very simple truss. So we've got an element that's in compression here. That ceiling joist is acting in tension. Uh, we have a very simple truss here. Okay, so that's kind of our assembly here. Okay, so with that, let me clear the screen. And um, <clears throat> now that we understand that we have a very simple truss, a very simple um, determinant, uh, simply supported truss, um, you'll recall uh, from our junior level statics that then we've got a node, we've got a node here. And so we need to make a load transfer we need to make a load transfer then between this element that is in compression and this element that is in tension. And all these green dots that you see there, hopefully you can see them on the screen, all those green dots are nails. That's how the engineer is trying to transfer the load between these two elements. So sure, if we go back, let me clear this, if we go back to the original question is, um, is there a limit to the number of nails? Sure, can, can you just keep piling on nails into this connection until you have enough nails to make that load transfer? And yes, um, the whole concept of a nailed connection, a nailed shear connection, all of that, those are all covered in other tutorials. I don't wanna get into that, those specifics right here. Um, but what we do wanna address is, does there come a point when there are too many nails in the connection? So, okay, we'll check our building code, right? We'll check our building code and see what's the limit on the nails. Well, I'll, 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 I'll save you a step. The building code is silent on, uh, on checking nails. I'm sorry, the building code is silent. And by building code, I mean the IBC as well as the NDS. So, um, both, and, and again, codes and all of that is covered in another tutorial. But the two codes that we would be interested in would be the IBC, unless you're in a local jurisdiction, well, I cover that in another tutorial as well, but unless you have a local jurisdiction that's um, governed by another building code. Um, but if we focus on the main codes, the IBC, the NDS, they're silent on, uh, on the proximity uh, or, or any limits on proximity of nails to each other. So, we don't have the code to guide us explicitly. It's not like the code is really kind to us and says, you know what, you got to space your nails one inch apart, or you got to space them apart um, by 10 nail diameters. There's nothing, there's nothing like that. So we need to use something else. So the one thing that the code does give us as a suggestion is if you run the risk of splitting the wood, splitting the wood, Let's talk about that for a second. Um, let me do this and let me do this. So let's assume we're looking at a piece of lumber here, kind of an elevation, right? This is the length. This is uh, seeing the side of, the, of, uh, of a piece of lumber um, spanning uh, from end to end. Um, and we have grain in that lumber, 
right? So you can kind of see when you look at a piece of lumber, you can kind of see the lines, which is what we call the grain. You can kind of see the grain of the lumber, right? And if you don't believe me, just go to your local hardware store and look at the lumber and you'll see the, the grain. You'll see those kind of lines uh, running along the length of the, of the members. Okay, so what happens with these grains, with, the, with these lines, is that if you come in here, and let me change here to blue, and if you drill a nail, you punch a nail, you drill a nail into the side of this member, no, let me undo that. You drill that nail into into the the side of the member what's going to happen is you're going to tend to split this wood so now and if you've ever done it and if you haven't you know you're welcome to do it right go get a little piece of lumber punch a nail into it hammer a nail into it and if you look closely after you've hammered that nail you're ah, i don't want to do that you're probably going to see like a small crack on either side of the nail because you've split the wood around the nail. You have to, almost by definition, if you think about it, if that was solid material and all of a sudden you're sticking in something that's a quarter inch round or, or whatever it is, right? Whatever the diameter is of that nail, well, you're gonna have to move the wood fibers apart to get the nail in. So by definition, you have to develop a crack. So sure, the concern is if we do if we do enough of this, if we punch enough nails in close proximity, right, and they're all developing cracks, at what point do we just damage the wood, crack it so bad that really our connection is rendered useless? It's counterproductive, right? Here we think, here we think that, you know, let's just say hypothetically a nail has, is able to transfer 100 pounds. Well, then if I add a second nail, I'm gonna get a 200 pounds uh, a load transfer. If I have three nails, I'll have 300 pounds, right? Well, does that mean that if you have 20 nails, you're gonna have 2000 pounds of load transfer there, right? At some point it becomes counterproductive. At some point you've damaged the wood so much, you've cracked it so much that it's now all splintered and you're really not getting any load transfer. So that's kind of what drives the question. So what the code gives us, what the code tells us is if you do have this situation and you're running the risk that you're gonna be, um, that you're gonna be uh, splintering the lumber because you have so many tightly spaced nails, what they tell you to do as a suggestion is to pre-drill the nail hole. So if you have a nail, let's assume that's the diameter of the nail, okay? Um, what they're telling you to do is to, let me see if I can draw. Hopefully you can see that on the screen, right? So I've drawn a, um, a circle on the left and an, uh, or, or um, a filled in circle on the left and an open circle on the right. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. What, what they're asking you to do is to pre-drill it, create a little pilot hole, um, not as big as the diameter of the nail, I believe, um, but create a pilot hole so that that way when the nail goes in, there's already that pilot hole that will reduce the splitting. So that's the only way that the building, that the, that the code uh, asks you or, or suggests to you uh, in terms of how to limit the damage from, from uh, splitting the wood. Keep in mind, that's still very much of a judgment call. Um, it's pre-drilling is only gonna get you so much. You know, same thing, if you wanna extrapolate, if you wanna extrapolate and we say, well, does that mean that I can put 40 nails closely spaced together, pre-drilled holes, and I'm gonna get my full capacity for 40 nails? Use some common sense, right? Chances are you're not. But at least the pre-drilling is, is one step that you can take
to at least gain more nails in a tight space and still get it to work. All right, um, let me see if there was anything else that we needed to cover here. Let me clear the screen. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So again, just be careful with that option. It is a tool that we have in our chest pre-drilling if we think that there's a risk of splitting the wood, but it's only of so much value, okay? Um, if this was helpful, would appreciate a thumbs up from you. Um, any comments, by all means, uh, leave them. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to entertain them. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to try to point you in the right direction. And if this was helpful to you, by all means, subscribe to our channel. Um, uh, click on the flag that, that allows you to receive automatic notifications when we have new structural engineering design tutorials so that you'd be advised of them. And with that, we can conclude this session. Okay, real good, guys.